All right. Hello, everybody. Lisa here with IVF Manifesting a Miracle. And today's guest is a friend and soul sister, Jess Lohman. Hey, Jess. Hello. <laughs> Jessica is my, you are my first um, international soul sister here. Oh, so as far wow. as having a soul sister conversation, and you're in Germany, mm -hmm. in Dortmund. And I'm so excited to have you on today for a little chat. Um, we both have fertility stories that I know you're, we're going to talk a bit about that and um, mm -hmm. the kind of work that you're doing is it's really awesome and so needed and I have to be honest I didn't know a lot about um, much of your field before I met you but you are the founder and marketing strategist at Ethical Brand Marketing. You're also a voiceover artist and eco fantasy author which I'll <laughs> share about that, a bit about that but you um, recently wrote a children's book just so exciting. Um, inspired, I think, by your daughter, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the work you're doing now, I just, I'm, I'm so honored to be having this conversation because, like, you're educating me on the importance of, you know, really protecting nature, animals, just helping visionary leaders. Can you share a little bit about who you serve and kind of what you do? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I've, I've been a marketer since 1991 and I've worked like the corporate world until 2013 and then um, became self-employed and started, um, you know, helping, helping companies, small companies with their marketing. And um, what I found in the beginning stages of my social entrepreneurship um, was who I actually wanted to help. And um, one of them is a hypnobirthing practitioner and I learned so much from her oh, that's um, during that time yeah that was like really amazing um, hypnobirthing this is really really um, the hmm. way to go that's a whole other um, topic I gotta dive into yeah exactly um, <laughs> um, and and um, and also with another client um, he sells safari tours in South Africa and Botswana and um, I worked with him to get like these elephant rides and ostrich rides and stuff out of his program and um, you know just to work with nature and work you know not work with animals yeah. but like yeah. no integration no no um, interaction with animals while people go on on, um, on mm -hmm. safaris or go on vacation or anything because they undergo a lot of torture, what yeah. people yeah, don't see. Much. I don't even know. Things. Like a safari ride sounds amazing and riding on an elephant, but it's like. Yeah, it's okay. like they they basically, you know, hit them before and stuff um, just so yeah. that they, so that they're calm. Um, and it, it, it's, yeah. It's yeah. Not, well, no, I love, um, love what you're doing because you're, you're helping consumers like make, you know, more conscious choices and what they're mm -hmm. buying and. Yeah. Um, one that's more like I was looking at your website, really more humane and kind to our environment and all of life on earth. So yeah, I you yeah. for what you're doing. It's just amazing. Yeah. I just believe like, I don't know. I, I don't believe that humans are above animals that, you know, we, it's yeah. a circle of life and, um, yeah. and we need, we need animals. We need nature to survive. And, yeah. um, you know, if, if COVID hasn't taught us anything, um, I hope it's it at least taught us that um um cuz yeah I mean so many companies just destroy our environment you know we all know these facts but we don't know everything and yeah. just um there are so many smaller companies that are um being founded right now especially now and they're producing their products as ethically as humanly possible um, mm -hmm. with as little damage and destruction to the environment and to animals and to people. Um, so I'm helping them with their marketing strategy um, mm -hmm. and with an ethical marketing strategy because there's a lot of manipulation um, in marketing with scarcity and urgency mm -hmm. tactics by mm -hmm. now or you're, you know, you're going to yeah. be a loser for the rest of your life, um, wow. you know, and, and and like the marketing, the marketing industry itself has, it, it, um, it advocates for excessive consumerism, which in turn helps destroy our environment. So yeah. it's, 
it's well, all I connected. You're right about this virus kind of really helping people reevaluate where they're putting their dollars. And I love, I love yep. that you're helping companies really just with the ones that are doing it right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 And I'd also like to get into um, like middle sized companies who want to change, who want to become sustainable, more mm -hmm. sustainable because it's, it's, a, it's a process and it's not easy. Yeah. Um, but you know if it, because the consumers are now demanding this they're demanding yeah. more ethics they're demanding cleaner supply chains yeah. and um so the companies have to respond well thank you I mean, for educating me on this very important <laughs> topic i mean we met i had a little one i had my daughter was only a few months old when we connected through a coaching group mm. and you were the only one out of the country the rest were here in denver and yeah. you know what's interesting is so the statistic of those who are going through infertility is one in eight individuals or couples. And in our small wow. group, there were six of us, mm. three of us, three of us three. had fertility struggles. I was yes. thinking about that. And I've shared with people, when you meet another fellow fertility warrior, you have this instant bond and this instant connection. And you always were supporting me and encouraging me to pursue this new passion and this new work that I'm doing to help others on this journey. And um, would you mind sharing a little bit about your fertility story? I know you had a long, how many years yeah. was it? It was a long journey um, for you, um, which has a happy ending. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can you share a yeah. bit about um, what that was like? Because you started that in Germany, and you've been living in Germany for how long now? Since 1995, so almost half my life, almost wow. 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I also have you. I'll have you explain like what the fertility coverage is like in Germany, because it's very different yeah. than the States. But yeah, please share like kind of where you started. I know you saw multiple doctors, had a lot of setbacks along your way. So yeah, yeah. You give people well, a what you went through. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, in 2000, that's when we said, okay, we're ready. We want to have a baby, you know, and I stopped taking the pill and, um, you know, we didn't start taking temperatures or anything like that. We yeah. just, you know, yeah went with the flow and nothing yeah. was happening and i was like okay um yeah and i was seeing um seeing a doctor and and you know everything seemed to be okay he left and then another um doctor took his place and mm -hmm. like after i don't know maybe about a year or so then she tested me for progesterone and she said okay your levels are low here take some of this and you know start writing in your book and uh, journaling and whatever, um, take, taking your temperature and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. This is like, uh -huh. this is so stupid. This is like, just going to stress me out. Um, but I did, I did what I had to do and, and nothing was happening. And, um, and it just seemed, it seemed to like, I don't know. I, I just kept on, you know, going to or trusting her. And then at one point I was like, okay, I got to find another doctor. Um, cause this, nothing's happening and, and I, we don't know why and blah. Yeah. And, um, and nothing happened with the next doctor. <laughs> and mm. I mean, after like had five you done rounds, years, had you done so many rounds at this point or were you just trying? No. Okay. No, no, I haven't even no. gotten into IVF yet. You just, it, okay. not even to any problems really. Um, gotcha. okay. I can't even remember, um, like, yeah, I think progesterone, that was the only thing I took or something. And, um, and after, it's crazy, sounds crazy, like after four and a half years or whatever, um, we, uh, then I went, then we moved or something. And then went, then I went to another doctor oh and she was like, how old are you? You know, how old are you? How long have you been trying? Oh my God. Okay. We're going to get you tested. And, um, how old were you around this time? Like, what were you? How old was I? In the mid thirties, um, like. I guess I was. Yeah, I was thirty-five. In yeah. your mid thirties, okay. I was yeah, I was thirty-five, and um, and then um, yeah, we they took a look inside and saw that my fallopian tubes were shot. The right side was completely shot, and the left side was just yeah. It was just um and they had never done that basic test. They had never time. done that basic test before, and I mean, here in Germany, it's like you you know, we're all covered. It's not like, yeah, that's you know, amazing. I had to pay for it. You got to share you know? that with people because that was shocking to me. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, it was also my fault, I guess, because I wasn't persistent enough, maybe, you know, and I just try to, I put my trust in people who yeah. think they know what they're doing, you know, or whatever. Um, um, yeah, and so she like, she got me an appointment like right away and boom, everything just seemed to happen like boop, 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 right after yeah. that, like really fast. And, um, and I mean, she was so careful with me. Aww. Okay, well that even like after the pregnancy and stuff, my mom yeah. even came and gave her a big hug and stuff. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's yeah. like after the fact. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then. Your um, third doctor, I mean, she was the one that really helped get things. Yeah. Done. The last one. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so we found that out and, you know, you then have two choices, basically, either you do IVF or you adopt or you let it go. Those are right? the only I mean, ones that gave you those choices? Well, did they have IUI? Did you ever do IUI? No, yeah, I never no, did either. No, okay, so IVF, um, adopt, or okay, or or let it go. I mean, that that for for us, those were the three choices okay. that we okay. that we considered anyway, and we're like, okay, we'll do IVF. And in Germany, um, you have to be wait, you can't be over thirty five. So maybe I was only thirty four when it started. I can't. Okay, I'm trying to think, okay. I was thirty. I was 37 when she was born. So that was like six years. Yeah. So, and maybe it was like, maybe I was 34 when we started. And yeah, you told me that you're, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but with Germany, they allow you to do three rounds of IVF before right. the age of 35. Three right? rounds. They will pay for most of it. I think for, for the whole three rounds that we did, I think we only paid, gosh. I can't remember. I'm I'm oh, thinking okay. like five or six thousand euros. Okay. Which yeah. That, wow. I mean, that's nothing, right? Yeah. And, like your medication um, was probably included, the rounds, I mean, all oh, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 And um so <laughs> but they only they will only pay for it up until thirty five. After that and a lot of people don't even know they own. have problems till after thirty five, right? Right. Just, yeah. Um, so that is a, that is a problem. They may have changed things since yeah. then because, you know, because of our situation and, you right, know, everybody right. is starting later or whatever nowadays. I don't know, but, um, but yeah, so. So you went through how uh, many rounds? I went through three and, um, and they only allow you to implant three eggs. Three at a time. Yeah. So you That's a lot. Have, I know, you, you can't have uh you know well that's still quite a bit it. here yeah. it's typically they recommend one maybe two embryos but okay. rarely three i don't even know okay. you know i see i, I thought you could, i thought um you were allowed to put in as many as you you want and that's how people get like six babies well out of, it's changed i think i think they've, the okay. clinics have gotten a little more cautious with that but that's, the first one you did you implant, they transferred two embryos the first round and then two yep. embryos the second round. And then, right. and then I got a little braver and then the third round, I did all three. And then you and did all three. Oh yeah, you did all three on your third round. Right. And you have to share part of, you know, your story, which involved going on vacation. Yes, yes. Um, during that waiting time, right? <laughs> yeah, um, the first, the first two times, it was just like frustrating. Like, I think the second time I, I made a mistake because there was like a vacation day or something and I made, made a mistake and, in, and did the injection a day early or a day late, I can't remember. And the doctor, after waking up from anesthesia, he yelled at me. He was so mad because he went in and saw that I messed up. Oh my and he gosh. was yelling at me. He was, a, he was not a nice doctor at all. No compassion, nothing. Mm. And, um, and I told another friend of mine who was going through it and going to him, she got upset with something he did. And I was like, save your energy for more important things. Let this stuff go because he's going to annoy you the whole time. <laughs> that people don't yeah. realize how everything's timed, right? Everything is like yeah. so scheduled. And, yeah. you know, Thank goodness you didn't hold on to that. You let that go. Yeah. You got yeah. enough ground covered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but by the third time I said, okay, we'll do all three. That's all I had left. And um, um, so we did all three. And before I was like, okay, Michael, my husband, I was like, okay, 
we're going to go on vacation. I don't care where we go. We just, we're just going to go for a week right after they do this so that we can relax and have a good time. And we just went to France. We went to, um, I don't know, the beach. I, yeah. I can't remember where we went, but uh, <laughs> Mediterranean, that was really yeah. nice. And, oh my um, gosh. and I remember driving, it was like kind of rough terrain. And I'm like, oh, I'm making scrambled eggs now. <laughs> That's awesome. I was like kind of scared. I was like, oh my God, is this too much movement? <laughs> we're like, oh, you're brave. No, that's, I mean, my last conversation I did with a friend, she too also went on, you know, went on vacation and there's a big element of just letting go, surrendering yeah. and what will be, will be. And exactly. I think so many yeah. women do obsess over every little movement detail. Don't eat this. Can't move that. I mean, yeah, I rested for about two days, I think, after our transfer and then just lived my mm -hmm. life, you know, yeah. we had one embryo, yeah. but you were lucky you had, what, yeah, three, six, seven, seven total embryos and of yeah. the last round. So you got to share your, <laughs> what happened in that third, third round? Yeah, well, um, yeah, when we got back from vacation, I think um, on that day that we got back uh the nurse called and she said i was pregnant and then i just started i just started like one. <laughs> but, but that's interesting because one of one of those three embryos one yeah yeah we didn't know at the time when she called you know that comes like a couple of weeks later when you get the first um first uh screening or whatever that's right and, yeah. funny. and a friend of ours um his family they did it and they they did it once three eggs triplets Boom. Wow. And, wow. um, and he called cause he knew, he knew, um, he knew yeah. when the call would come and, um, and he called and he was like, and how many? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm not as lucky as you. I only have one, but still. Um, lucky <laughs> me. Yeah. One, I mean, you dream of having one healthy child, right? That's right. That's right. And, and you have um, a little girl and not so little anymore, but how old is she? Yeah. She's 13 now. Leandra, so. right? Leandra. Leandra, yeah. Um, and I called her Leandra June because June was the month that I got pregnant. That oh, I, I love that. Yeah, that so, is so special. Yeah. yeah, so exactly 14 years ago this, this, this month, yeah. Wow. So, and so she was born in February 2007. And... Um, and uh, yeah, the whole time during the pregnancy, that was also kind of crazy because because the doctor was so careful with me, yeah. and I and because of the system here, I I didn't have to work a lot during mm -hmm. that whole time. I still got paid. I wow. still got paid a hundred percent the gosh. whole pregnancy, and I I laid down for the last four months. You had to okay. for bed rest or. Yeah, not complete bed rest, but she was like, I don't want you walking around. I don't want you going upstairs too much. No exercise. I mean, she really, and she, she sent me to the hospital a couple of times because she said, um, sensing contractions with her little machine. I'm like, I'm not sensing anything. I don't want to oh go to gosh. hospital. So do you but think she was like, like extra, extra careful? I mean, do you think that was the definitely, thing? really definitely extra i had to go there twice a week so that was the only thing that she like allowed me to do basically you know go go and visit her and get checked and um yeah she sent me to the hospital twice um hmm. during the pregnancy just to make sure and you know just because she you know wow. the, the machine sense contractions and stuff and i was fine i was like um, I remember writing my mom. I was like, okay, well, I got to go to the hospital now, blah, 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 blah. And like, my husband's waiting in the car, like, come on, come on. And I'm like, but wait, just like, like it's this now. <laughs> but no real red flags, like with concerns about no. your baby, other than some, mm -hmm. she sends contractions. That's interesting. Yeah. I've never heard yeah, that. It was, with yeah, and, I didn't. I, hmm. Honestly, I, you know, I'm sure there was something that, you know, was measured, but I don't, it wasn't life threatening and all was good. And I was, you know, I just kind of had the attitude, this baby is coming and I know this baby is going to be healthy and everything's good. That was like the only time I think in my whole entire life that I was so sure of yeah. something really yeah. seriously, because, um, I'm, I'm always doubtful. Right. Um, but that was like, I knew it. Yeah. Everything's going to be fine. And it, and it was, and, um, well, our mindset is, very key when you go through this. I'm I'm all about the mindset and the thoughts you're thinking, yeah. and so just that inner knowing you had that, and 
That's key. Powerful. That's, yeah, very much. Um, what, um, looking back kind of on your journey, you know, I mean, what has infertility taught you? What, what have those struggles, have they helped you in being a mom now or in your business? Mm, I guess um, one thing was being grateful, being very grateful um, because we take so much for granted. And, um, and that, yeah, I, I always try to like look back at that when I'm, when I'm taking something for granted and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. I, I do have this miracle and, um, you know, it changes it you does. forever, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 it does. And, uh, yeah. And I think I told Leander pretty early on, I was like, not everybody has this picture of an egg. This is you. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, isn't it like the most special gift? We have it yeah. in our room and I see it every single day. Mm. And the day of our transfer, they gave us the picture of our embryo and then where they in, had implanted, you know, I didn't know it was a she at the time, but in my uterus, yeah. this little speck of light, you know, with the ultrasound. Yeah. And it's just like so very amazing when you just see that. <laughs> Started as yeah. this like little speck of just magic, you know? Magic. Yeah. Seriously. Hairy dust. Yeah. <laughs> what, um, if you were kind of giving advice to people starting out on this path and you had si a six year journey through your fertility struggles and with three failed, two failed cycles, one, one, you know, that worked out, like what would you advise people starting out in this path? Do you have any advice or any like reflections that you could share? Yeah. Um, I guess the, the main thing is don't let the doctors make you crazy <laughs> because I, I felt like my, like every doctor that I had to deal with, they were trying to stress me out <sighs> and, um, yeah, unnecessarily. Um, yeah, I think like leaving a clinic that you maybe aren't connect, feeling connected to, right. You want to trust yeah. your doctor and have that, yeah. that caring exactly. professional. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, trust your instincts. Um, because the doctors don't know everything. They definitely don't know you. Um, and yeah. so trust your instincts and That's intuition. And yeah. Yeah. Um, how was, um, how was it going through with like, you know, Father's Day is coming up and um, I know you have a pretty supportive husband who's been there and how is he, you know, as a dad and just going through this journey, has it changed him in any way? Do you see? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know to, oh, good question. Um, he, he, he's a very laid back kind of guy. So he doesn't let anything bother that's a, him. That's a good type of partner to have on this journey. It is. <laughs> Someone it to is. just kind of ride the wave with you, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, oh, that's cool. um, and I, I remember like, like when, um, uh, when, um, <laughs> after, after we found out that my, that my, um, uh, I'm trying, I know the German word that my uh, fallopian tubes were, oh. were closed. He was like, oh, well, I'm glad it's not me or, or something like, oh, I knew it wasn't going to be me. I was oh, like, <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that could have been like the worst thing you could have said, but, um, oh. but I was like, okay. <laughs> I, yeah. I'll forget. Yeah, gentlemen, for if you're hearing this, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> approach it as a team. Approach it as a team. Just, exactly. Just, exactly. Oh my um, gosh. That's funny. But, uh, but then, um, funny but now, then when I got funny the call, then. yeah, when I got the call and I started crying, he was, he kind of made fun of me too, because I was crying. I'm like, come on. So oh my gosh. Yeah, but like, every other time he was very supportive. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's an emotional yeah, at least I, could, I laughed about it. So it's okay. You gotta keep it light. <laughs> that's something I remember, you know, with my husband and me, yeah. I had a lot of emotional moments and just outbursts and crying at a PBS show on sloths and I mean just like <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Guy but yeah I mean you got to keep the lightness and yeah it sounds like he was able to do that for you yeah 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 he was he even made um, me laugh but yeah <laughs> so one thing I love that you have blended your work um with your children's book that you wrote can you share a bit about your book and yeah what inspired yeah, sure. you to write it yeah, um, actually, uh, my, it's actually my parents' death kind of like inspired me to write a book 
to begin with. Um, because my mom died in 2016 and my dad died in 2017 and they were young 66 and 65 they were wow. they were too young wow. um but they had always they they taught me to respect nature and respect all animals my mom used to rescue animals and so you know we had we always had animals come in and out and um, and she worked that. for a vet i worked for a vet um during high school and college and uh and after she died, it was actually she died on the day I arrived in South Africa for the vacation of my life. And, um, and that, was, that was very, very traumatic. Um, um, and I thought about writing a book about being in Africa and hearing that news and then seeing an elephant family. I mean, it was just like, because wow. I stayed there because she actually... She actually told me she had surgery and she actually told me, do not come home. If anything, if I die, do not come home. I don't want a funeral. Um, so mm -hmm. I just talked to her husband and we, you know, chatted like every night while we were there. And then afterwards, then my daughter and I, then we flew to Florida to mm -hmm. be with him and my sister. And, um, but um, I thought about writing a book like that with pictures that I took and um, in my grief. And then... And then my dad died and I was like, you know what? I think the world, and, and because of my work, and I was like, I think the world needs something else right now. And so because they taught me to respect nature and animals, um, I mm -hmm. was like, I'm gonna write a series for children for middle grade from eight to 12 year olds. Cause they're like at that right age, they're not teenagers. They don't know everything yeah. yet. And they're still willing to learn and, yeah. um, and they have a voice at that age too. Mm. And so I was like, okay, I want to write a series where each book addresses a different animal rights issue. And it. so the first one, a fantasy, and the first one um, is called Lily Bowers and the Uninvited Guest, and it addresses animal testing, and which is a very heavy topic. Um, and um and very controversial um mm. so but i i wrote it in a way in a fantasy way she could talk to animals um you know she finds out that she can talk to animals and she has an animal spirit guide which is a wolf and um and you know she meets mother nature and so um so that's going to be the first one the first one's going to be or the second one's going to be about the animal farm industry and that's going to be also pretty controversial. I might become a vegetarian after that one, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm vegan, so, but it's not going to be in a go vegan, blaming and shaming type of way, but um, kind of like in a know how your food got on your plate type of way. Yeah. And that everybody wants to eat in peace and it's okay, but be conscious about it. Um, mm -hmm. so, so your first book is done and I know you're doing some additions with the illustrations and yeah yeah um so i published that last year on april 24th which is world day for lab animals laboratory animals that's cool and um and i published it as an ebook uh because i'm because the print versions are going to be eco printed so okay. you know they have to be vegan no no animal glue um they have to be animal um cruelty free and they have to be on you know recycled or um or pc w post-consumer waste paper which is like better than recycled um that's like wow. using all the that wow that's incredible i don't think that's i can yeah i have i have a list of my requirements <laughs> and i just sent them off to printers and i now have three three offers from um from printers here in Europe. Oh the only thing is they don't do POD. They don't do print on demand like Amazon. Oh. So I have to get a bunch printed, okay. pay for it up front, and then ship them out myself, um, oh, which I'm not too excited about. Like things you don't even think about, the glue that holds the book together, right? Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's why it's taken me so long. Uh, 
to get a printed version out. It's obvious, you know, like I said, it's not out yet. I just got the third offer yesterday. So I still have to look at through the offers, but, um, but yeah, as the ebook, I, it's free and, um, and it wasn't on Amazon. I tried different outlets before because I didn't really want to go the Amazon route for ethical reasons. Right. But I was, but Amazon is the leader as far as books, definitely. And um, so yeah. I decided like two months ago, okay, I'm going on Amazon. It's still going to be free. And they were very cooperative too. I mean, you just send mm -hmm. them an email and say, you know, hey, it's free everywhere else. Put it on free here. Wow. And they're like, okay. So, um, awesome, Jess. yeah, but when I get the new illustrations, then I'm going to put the price on it because that costs money. So, yeah. so you imagine a series of just a collection of different books. And I love that. Yeah, yeah. I still have to find the time to write the second one. I got some of the outline done, but <laughs> well, you're kind of busy with your, yeah. your your ethical branding and helping other yeah. brands, you know, their strategies and yeah. Just for my own education, I think others would like to know too, like what companies can you recommend that are doing like really good things out there that yeah. I know I'm not asking the, the right question, but like ethically, who can we support and couple different categories. Do you have some recommendations? You yeah, can I do. Um, last year I was the judge and sponsor for um, the Be the Change Awards, um, which was an initiative by actually two friends of mine in, in the UK who, um, one of them is also a marketing strategist and the other one um, has her own, her own sustainable fashion brand. And um, they decided to like make an award ceremony for um for ethical brands for sustainable mm -hmm. brands in different categories like my category was brands that give back but they had like a a baby and kids category they had um a, a sustain, uh, sustainable fashion category um yeah. a books category um a, mm -hmm. household items and stuff like that. so they mm -hmm. had a bunch of categories and um and so that is be the change awards.org and um find a whole list there yeah at the bottom of that of the home page the, the companies are listed um a lot of them are uk though because you're in the states and i'm not in the states so i don't buy from from many companies in the states unless i'm shipping to somebody in the states okay um, but there are so many companies like I wanted, I wanted to ship um, my niece some chocolate, but then thought better of it because she lives in Florida. Uh -huh. So <laughs> the, the, the shipping cost just from, you know, from one state in the States to Florida was like insane. I was like, okay, well, she doesn't need this chocolate. Um, so instead I bought her some, some coffee and it's like hounds and grounds. And what they do is they, they support um, it's, it's fair trade coffee. Mm -hmm. and um and they support i i don't remember the organization but okay. but dogs hounds and like, grounds so dogs. hounds and grounds okay. yeah i love the name i love the name Yo, I like so, that. Um, so i like my advice for anybody is to um w if they want to shop more ethically um is just to look at the stores online and and look at their about page see how they're how they make their products see who's making their products if they talk about it it needs to be transparent because if it isn't it's probably not ethically made mm. if they don't lay it out and say here's our supply chain from a to z you know wow. here where here's where the seeds come from here's how they're grown here's the farmer who grows it and he lives in peru and he has this you know water yeah. irrigation system that you know comes yeah. from the the rains or something i don't know um, mm. how the dyes are made and the clothes and um one example yeah i use essential oils so i yeah Matera is the brand that i've been using and yeah everything is really pure and mm. comes from the source you know and ethically yeah. produced and everything so yeah yeah and um you know we have the right as consumers to ask companies how they make their stuff because a mm -hmm. lot of them don't give out this information because it's a dirty supply chain in most uh, cases yeah. you know i mean when you think of h and m they have what 83 collections in the year that's more than one a week that's like who needs so many clothes and like clothes they 
Wow. You know, the, the people in Bangladesh, the, the children are bathing in these dyes, working to make our clothes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the factories are just horrible and, and the clothes are so cheaply made. And, and okay. there, a lot of, a lot of it lands, you know, ends up in landfill and, oh. Mm, so you know and then materials like materials I, I could go on talking yeah no you're so knowledgeable this. in this um I'll definitely link <laughs> your website for people to connect with you I know you have a couple websites um yeah jessloman.com and then also mm -hmm. ethicalbrandmarketing.com mm -hmm. um yeah. yeah you're such a wealth of knowledge like people like you I just am so inspired by to really make more conscious choices in what I'm buying and supporting yeah. um yeah it's like, it does cost a little bit more money, but we don't need so much stuff. We yeah. don't need all the stuff that we're buying. It's unnecessary, but that's what marketing does. Right. right? That's what the industry is doing. Buy, buy, buy. Oh, yeah. But we don't need it, you know? Exactly. No. Shop, stop. Uh -huh. Hashtag shop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I'm so excited that we've had this talk and thank you for you know, being the soul sister of mine way off in Germany. And it's what time? Six, what time is it there right now? It's yeah. Six, six 42 now. Yeah. Okay. In the evening. Yeah. yeah. Well, I love you and I'm just excited yes, to see too. more books that come from you. And, um, yours too. I love your title, by the way. I was like, when I read it, I was like, I got chills. I was like, Oh, that's so oh. wonderful. Thank on, you so much. Well, hold you on. get it, right? Hold on. hold on. You gotta hold on. Yeah. <laughs> hold on for your little one and hold on to yourself during this crazy ride. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hopefully the printing will be out on mine very soon. Just my yeah. nephew knows. So can't wait to share that with you. But um, for anyone who's in need of extra support on this journey, you can reach me at IVFmanifestingamiracle.com and I'll be sharing this video out to um, on my YouTube station. Hopefully you'll like it and subscribe and share this out. And Jess, you're just awesome. Thank you for sharing your journey. You are too. And um, yeah, I wish you success on the book. This like, Thank that's you. amazing. I'm so proud Thank of you. you so much. <laughs> well, I appreciate you cheering me along from the very beginning when I started this, yeah. the seed of an idea. So, <laughs> and I give you a shout out in the book to all my, soul, my super tight soul sisters. So, <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> we'll talk to you in love, Jess. Bye. Okay. Bye.